Pursuant to subsection 17.2 of the Australian Capital Territory Self-Government Act 1988, Commonwealth, I, Joy Birch, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly for the Australian Capital, Capital Territory, do by this notice convene the first meeting of the 10th Legislative Assembly for the Australian Capital Territory at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, the 3rd of November, 2020, in the chamber of the Legislative Assembly, Canberra, in the Australian Capital Territory. Dated the 28th of October, 2020, signed Joy Birch, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly for the Australian Capital Territory. Members, Section 9 of the Australian Capital Territory Self-Government Act 1988 and Sections 6A and 10A of the Oaths and Affirmations Act 1984 provide that a member of the Legislative Assembly for the Australian Capital Territory shall, before taking his or her seat, make and subscribe an oath or affirmation in accordance with the form set out in the Oaths and Affirmations Act. The oath or affirmation is required to be made before the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the Australian Capital Territory or a person authorised by the Chief Justice. Will members please come to the uh, table in the order in which their electorates and names are read? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I present the instrument notifying the names of candidates elected to the Legislative Assembly for the Australian Capital Territory. Will members please come to the table in the order in which their electorates and names are read uh, so that they may take uh, their oath or affirmation. I call members for the electorate of Brindabella, Joy Birch, Mick Gentleman, Nicole Lauder, Mark Parton and Jonathan Davis. Joy Birch. I, Joy Birch, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Mick Gentleman. I, Michael Dana Gentleman, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Nicole Lauder. I, Nicole Ann Lauder, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law.
Christ. Mark Parton. I, Mark Stewart Parton, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Jonathan Davis. I, Jonathan Reginald Davis, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. For the election of Jim and Dera, <coughs> Yvette Berry, Elizabeth Kickett, Tara Chain, Joe Clay, and Peter Kane. <coughs> Yvette Berry. I, Yvette Berry, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Elizabeth Kickett. I, Elizabeth Gilinganoa Kickett, swear by Almighty God that I will be faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. So help me God. Tara Chain. I, Tara Chain, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Joe Clay. I, Joe Clay, swear by Almighty God that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. So help me God. Peter Kane. I, Peter John Kane, swear by my by my Almighty God that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. So help me God.
I call members from the electorate of Currajong, Andrew Barr, Shane Rattenbury, Rachel Stephen Smith, Elizabeth Lee, and Rebecca Vazzarotti. Andrew Barr. I, Andrew James Barr, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Shane Rattenbury. I, Shane Stephen Rattenbury, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Rachel Stephen Smith. I, Rachel Stephen Smith, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Elizabeth Lee. I, Elizabeth Sligi Lee, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Rebecca Vazzarotti. I, Rebecca Vazzarotti, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. I now call members from the electorate of Murrumbidgee, Jeremy Hanson, Chris Steele, Julia Jones, Marisa Patterson, Emma Davidson. Jeremy Hanson. I, Jeremy Hanson, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I'll faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Chris Steele. 
I, Christopher James Steele, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Julia Jones. I, Julia Jones, swear by Almighty God that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law, so help me God. Marisa Patterson. I, Marisa Patterson, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to the law. Emma Davidson. I, Emma Jane Davidson, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Now call members from the electorate of Yerevi, Alastair Coe, Michael Pedersen, Suzanne Orwa, Andrew Braddock and Leanne Castley. Alastair Coe. I, Alistair Bruce Coe, swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. Michael Pedersen. I, Michael Hugh Pedersen, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Suzanne Orr. I, Suzanne Patricia Orr, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. Andrew Braddock. I, Andrew Braddock, solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law.
Leanne Castley. I, Leanne Gay Castley, swear by Almighty God that I will faithfully serve the people of the Australian Capital Territory as a member of the Legislative Assembly and discharge my responsibilities according to law. So help me God. Standing Order 1E provides that the Assembly shall now proceed to elect a Speaker. I seek nominations for the position of Speaker. I call Mr Barr. I nominate Ms Joy Birch. Does the member accept the nomination? Are there any other further proposals? Uh, there being no, the time for proposals has expired. There being no further proposal, I declare that Ms Birch, the member proposed, to have been elected as Speaker. Thank you indeed, um, members, and can I say it is um, an honour to be elected um, and unopposed to show support across the chamber. So thank you for that. There is the next item of election of Chief Minister, but if I may, with your indulgence already, members, um, ask you to stand so I can do acknowledgement to country. Darawa Nuna, Darawal Nanawal. Yangu Nalaweri, Duni Manyan Nanawaweri, Darawaweri, Nangara, Dindi, Dalawa, Nanawabun, Yin Jamara, Lijin Yin. Thank you, members. So the next item is business is the election of the Chief Minister. Ms. Berry. Uh, member, do such a member, uh, does you accept the nomination? Mr Barr? Uh, yes, Madam Speaker. Um, is there any further proposals? Mrs Jones? Does the member accept the nomination? Nomination. Are there any further proposals? Uh, the time of proposals has expired. So, members, we will um, move to an election of an, a ballot for the Chief Minister.
Ballot papers will now be distributed. Will members please write on the ballot paper the name of the candidate for whom they wish to vote and hold their ballot paper for collection. And the papers will be coming to you now, members. Celeste, Celeste, Celeste. Members, the result of the ballot is Mr Andrew Barr, 16, Ms Elizabeth Lee, 9. Therefore, Mr Andrew Barr is the candidate with the majority of votes of members present and voting and is now declared Chief Minister. Well done, Chief Minister. Chief Minister. Uh, thank you, Minister Speaker. I seek leave to make a statement. Is leave granted? Leave is granted, Chief Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm incredibly humbled to have the privilege of serving again as Chief Minister. I wish to thank 
my colleagues for the support and trust that they have placed in me to lead the government. I sincerely thank the people of Currajong for their strong support once again at this election. And I thank the people of Canberra for voting for a progressive government. Madam Speaker, I congratulate you on your election and on behalf of all members in this place, wish you well in what is a very important and occasionally challenging role. I congratulate all of the new and returning members of the ACT Legislative Assembly. I know you have all worked tirelessly to engage with your local communities over the course of your campaigns. It is an honour and a privilege to represent Canberrans in this place. And I know you all appreciate the significant trust that has been placed in us to deliver for our community. Madam Speaker, four years ago we marked the first time in Australian political history that a parliament included more women than men. And I'm proud that the ACT Legislative Assembly continues to have the highest proportion of female politicians of any parliament in Australia. Madam Speaker, this year has been a year like no other. From bushfires to toxic smoke to devastating hailstorms and then a global pandemic. Throughout all of this, protecting the health and livelihoods of Canberrans has been our top priority. And it will remain so as we continue to focus on our economic recovery. In these most difficult of times, the people of the ACT have voted for a progressive government and an ambitious vision for the future. They've also voted for a clear and comprehensive economic plan as we emerge from the greatest economic challenge of our self-governing era. We will remain focused on this. We know the COVID-19 pandemic is not over and there is a lot more work to do. Our community will need continued support as we respond to the ongoing threat of the coronavirus. Madam Speaker, protecting and creating jobs will be central to our economic recovery. And we remain committed to growing Canberra's employment base to more than 250,000 jobs by 2025. We know that a secure, well-paid job is about more than putting food on the table or paying the rent or mortgage. It provides meaning, structure, connection, and opportunity in people's lives. Our government has a track record of driving down unemployment and creating jobs. Just last week, the State of the States report revealed the ACT was the second strongest performing economy in Australia, thanks to the strength of our jobs market and our low level of unemployment. Throughout the pandemic, the ACT has maintained the lowest unemployment rate in the country. And we've been the only state or territory to see unemployment fall in the past quarter, down to 3.8%. The government's view that significant investment across a range of areas, including health, education and renewable energy, will continue to create jobs and keep people in work. We have already delivered the first stage of the light rail project, Gungarland to the city, and we are committed to extending the network south, a project that is expected to create 6,000 jobs. One of our biggest projects in this term, Madam Speaker, will be the expansion of the Canberra Hospital. A bigger and better Canberra Hospital will deliver more beds, more surgeries, more support for people with mental illness, a larger emergency department, and importantly, more doctors, nurses and health professionals. Over the next four years, we will hire at least 400 new nurses, doctors and healthcare professionals across the Territory's health system. 2020 has clearly highlighted the incredible work of our health professionals and reinforced the need for quality healthcare. Our effective response to the pandemic would not have been possible 
without their tireless work. That's why we will continue to invest in quality healthcare. This will include starting the new network of walk-in health centres across Canberra, building the new elective surgery centre at the University of Canberra Hospital Precinct, delivering 60,000 elective surgeries over the next four years, and establishing a centre for excellence in caring for older people at Calvary Hospital, and increasing our investment in mental health funding. Madam Speaker, like our nurses, Canberra teachers were there when we needed them most, ensuring that children continued to learn, even at the peak, the first wave of the pandemic. We will ensure our teachers remain the best paid in the country, and we will employ 400 new teachers and support staff and new teacher librarians to support the great work in our education system. We believe every public school should be a great school. And that's why we will continue our nation leading investment in digital learning, expanding our Chromebook rollout to every public high school and college student, and providing 300 of the most vulnerable households in Canberra with free internet access. We will also establish a future of education equity fund to support disadvantaged families with their educational expenses. And we're committed to investing in school infrastructure to serve our city's growing population, upgrading existing schools and building new zero emission schools in the Malonglo Valley, West Belconnen and Gungala. Madam Speaker, the ACT has led the nation with our response to climate change. We are the first jurisdiction in Australia to be powered 100% by renewable electricity, which is driving down energy bills. And we will further cement Canberra's status as the renewable energy capital of Australia by building the biggest renewable battery storage system in the country. We will continue to reduce emissions without placing financial pressure on households. Parliamentary and governing agreement signed yesterday between ACT Labor and the ACT Greens further entrenches the government's commitment to climate action, taking the next essential steps to net zero emissions in the ACT's future. Madam Speaker, I am proud that Canberra is Australia's most inclusive city. We are a refugee welcome zone. We are also part of the Global Welcoming Cities Network, formally acknowledging this city as one that continues to welcome migrant and multicultural communities. There has also been a lot of hard work and reform to ensure Canberra continues to be the most LGBTIQ plus welcoming city in the country, including the development of the Capital of Equality strategy and the accompanying action plan. The government is committed to ensuring Canberra remains an inclusive and welcoming place to live. An important priority in this parliamentary term is the modernisation of the Territories Discrimination Act. We look forward to getting this work underway. And we're committed to, the, to understanding and responding to the needs of everyone in the community as we face the impacts of COVID-19 together. Madam Speaker, I want to take this moment to congratulate the Greens party on their strong result in the October election and to formally welcome five new members. <clears throat> Clearly, the strong support for progressive parties in the election reflects the community's desire for progressive leadership at this time. I look forward to working with the Greens party to deliver the parliamentary and governing agreement that we signed yesterday that reflects our shared progressive values and our shared commitment to continuing improvements to health, education, transport and housing, whilst taking real action on climate change. The agreement will ensure a stable territory government that benefits from the distinct but collaborative approaches of our two political parties. Madam Speaker, I also want to acknowledge the Canberra Liberals. You raised many issues in the last parliament and during the campaign. We often disagree on politics and policy. However, I am optimistic that there will be times when we do agree, and I look forward to working constructively together in those times. Congratulations to Elizabeth Lee and Julia Jones. Leading a party is an honour and it's a challenge. And I wish you both well in your new roles. 
And if I can be so bold, I offer one piece of advice. Be nice to the Chief Minister. <laughs> I also acknowledge former Opposition Leader Alistair Coe and thank him for a respectful and hard-fought campaign. You kept me on my toes throughout the process. Perhaps I don't want to be in the boxing ring with you. <laughs> Finally, Madam Speaker, I wish to thank my Labor colleagues and the entire Labor family for all of their hard work and dedication to our cause. I thank Deputy Chief Minister Yvette Berry and acknowledge the re-election of Rachel Stephen-Smith, Chris Steele, Mick Gentleman, Suzanne Orr, Tara Chain, Michael Pedersen, Madam Speaker Joy Birch, and I warmly welcome our newest MLA, Dr Marisa Patterson. Sadly, we say farewell for now to Gordon Ramsay, Bette Cody and Deepak Rajgupta, and we thank them for their contribution to this place. I thank all of the Labor candidates and their supporters who worked so tirelessly and passionately over many months to get us to where we are today. I wish to pay special thanks to our campaign director, Mel James, uh, and my team. Under the leadership of my Chief of Staff, Michael Cook, I observed on election night in this place we're only ever as good as our staff and the support that they provide us. And I thank my entire office and the staff of every single member of the Labor Party. And I acknowledge Greens uh, and Canberra Liberal staff as well who work so hard for their causes. I want to thank my family, and my husband, Anthony. It's nice to be able to say that, my husband, Anthony, for their ongoing love and support. We simply can't do these jobs without the support of our family and friends. And finally, Madam Speaker, I again thank the people of Canberra for putting their trust in me as Chief Minister. I'm proud and humbled to lead Australia's most progressive jurisdiction. And we will work hard, Madam Speaker, every day to protect the health and well-being of Canberrans. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Minister. Members, under Standing Order 5A, the Leader of the Opposition shall be the Leader of the largest non-government party with the consent of that member. I have received correspondence from Ms Lee advising me that she has been selected and has given her consent to be Leader of the Canberra Liberals, the largest non-government party, and I wish to table that correspondence. Ms Lee, you seek leave? I seek leave to make a statement. Is leave granted? Leave yes. is granted, Ms Lee. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the people of the Australian Capital Territory. It is an enormous privilege to be afforded the opportunity once again to be a voice for our community. Madam Speaker, congratulations on your election. I wish you the very best in once again undertaking this very important role in our parliament. I acknowledge my party room colleagues, Julia Jones, Jeremy Hansen, Mark Parton, Alastair Coe, Nicole Lauder, Elizabeth Kickett, Peter Kane and Leanne Castle. Whilst we are too short in number this term, we are an incredible team that brings together an enormous diversity of life experiences, of professional backgrounds and of different cultures. I am honoured to be leading this strong team along with my deputy, Julia. Thank you to Alastair and Nicole who led a strong united team to the 2020 election. I acknowledge them and their families in leading a strong campaign through one of the most challenging times that we have seen. Alistair and Nicole have always remained committed to serving the people of Canberra, and I have no doubts that they will continue to do so as integral and strong members of my team this term. I acknowledge our colleagues that we farewelled this term to the late Steve Dospot. My fellow member for Karajong, who deemed himself my big brother almost the instant that we met. His legacy in our community and in particular in the inner south is legendary and he's very much missed by many. To Vicky Dunn, who dedicated almost 20 years of her adult life to serving the people of Canberra. Whilst, of course, one of our biggest regrets is that we were able to make her a minister, she served her community and the Assembly with distinction and she will be sorely missed. To Andrew Wall, James Milligan and Candace Birch. When they were not returned this election, 
Canberra lost some excellent local members, but we lost our friends. Andrew, James and Candice brought so much to the Canberra Liberals team and to our community, and it is, without a doubt, a huge loss for us not having them on our benches and in our corridors. Thank you for your service to the Canberra Liberals and to the people of Canberra, and we know that your commitment to our community will not stop at the doors of the Assembly. Our new members, Peter Kane and Leanne Cassley, bring some fresh air to our team this term. In Ginadera, Peter's experience as a former teacher and principal, lawyer and vice president of the Law Society, will bring a huge level of experience and expertise in so many aspects of governance, and we are very fortunate to have him join us. In the deep north of Yerby, Leanne's savviness and her background as an IT consultant and a country music singer will bring a level of freshness and engagement that will be of great benefit to our team. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I also acknowledge the loss of members Caroline Lacuda and Megan Fitzharris, who retired from the Assembly this term, and Gordon Ramsay, Deepak Raj Gupta and Beck Cody, who were not returned. Whilst we did not always agree, I know that many of us in this side worked closely with them and we value the contributions that they made to our assembly. I wish them and their families all the very best. Mm -hmm. I also acknowledge and welcome new member for Labor, Dr Marissa Patterson, and five, I didn't realise I was going to say this, but five new members of the Greens, <laughs> Rebecca Vassarotti, Emma Davidson, Jonathan Davis, Andrew Braddock and Joe Clay. I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Congratulations must go to Andrew Barr and Shane Rattenbury on leading their parties to their election as a coalition Labor Greens government. No doubt this new dynamic with multiple ministers from both parties will make for an interesting term in Cabinet and I wish you both well, not so well, but I wish you well <laughs> over the next few years. We are all in this place, Madam Speaker, because we all want to make a difference, a positive contribution to the future of Canberra. We are all in this place, Madam Speaker, because we have all been given the enormous privilege by our community to be their voice. Our parliament and our democracy is stronger because every one of the members sitting here had the courage to put up their hand to serve our community. I've always said that our parliaments should reflect the diversity of the communities that they serve, and for too long it has not been the case. In 2016, we made history in electing the first female majority parliament in Australia, and this year we did one better. What we did not achieve as a parliament is to have more ethnically diverse faces around this chamber. And I am so proud that the Canberra Liberals put up an impressive lineup of candidates that reflect the depth of diversity in our great city. It was, of course, in sharp contrast to the field of candidates put up by Labor and the Greens, and our party room reflects that. But diversity goes beyond gender and ethnicity. Our diversity of views, life experiences and opinions should be protected fiercely because different ideas and the freedom to express those ideas make for robust debates that inevitably lead to better outcomes. The leaders of all parties in this chamber have at one point or another, and the Chief Minister said again in his speech, we've all said publicly that there is real potential for this term to see more collaboration and teamwork on areas that we can find common ground. And whilst, of course, we acknowledge that there will be yet another Labor Greens government, I take them at their word on this that the ideas and initiatives put forward by the Canberra Liberals also deserve to be judged on their merits and not dismissed because they were started by us. Just as we, as the opposition, have an important job to do in keeping the government to account, to fiercely protect the integrity of government, the proper use of taxpayer monies, the transparency and accountability on all government decisions, we will look at every government decision and initiatives on their merits and whether it is in the best interests of the Canberra community. Madam Speaker, in my inaugural speech four years ago, I said that whilst it is a given that I give my voice to the most vulnerable in our community, those that our society has a moral duty to protect and support, 
There are the forgotten Canberrans that 19 years of this government have left behind. The Canberra Liberals will unapologetically and unashamedly continue to stand up for and give voice to those Canberrans. We acknowledge and thank the thousands of Canberrans who put their faith in us at this year's election and shed the same tears as we couldn't quite just make it across the other side of the chamber. These are the hardworking, everyday Canberrans who for years have felt abandoned and voiceless. But we also acknowledge the Canberrans who did not vote for us. Their voices spoke loud and we will listen to and be here for them too. Madam Speaker, none of us would be here today without the enormous support network that carries us. I thank all the volunteers and family members who were there for each and every one of us. I also acknowledge our staff who move mountains each and every day because they believe in each of us. A little closer to home, to Nathan, thank you for being my rock through two whirlwind campaigns. The heartbreak of experiencing a miscarriage before we welcomed our beautiful daughter Mia. And most of all, thank you for being my number one supporter when I decided to take on this craziest and most humbling of challenges yet <laughs> in leading the party. To my parents and sisters who have already sacrificed so much so that I could reach for my dreams. Every time I think that I cannot ask any more of them, they somehow manage to find room in their hearts to give more. I am sure that in my parents' eyes, I am still the seven-year-old Korean girl from Gwangju with no English, who held tightly onto their hands as we embarked on this new life in Australia. The little girl who in turn tightly held onto her younger sister's hand because somehow we knew that as scary as it was going to a new country and leaving our home, it was all going to be worth it because this new life was going to be something amazing. Madam Speaker, when I was elected by my colleagues to be leader of our party, my dad told me, you are a leader. Whether you like it or not, what you say and what you do will matter. Always listen, then see, then feel. You must do this, listen, see, feel before you speak. And so today I embark on this privileged duty that I have to serve my colleagues, my party and my city in this way. A vow to listen, to see and to feel because it is and will always be about putting our community first. Julia, Jeremy, Mark, Alistair, Nicole, Elizabeth, Peter and Leanne, I look forward to serving the people of Canberra with you. I could not ask for a more dedicated and committed team to do this with. Thank you for being by my side as we embark on this journey together. Even from opposition, we are going to achieve some extraordinary things. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Lee. Mr Rattenbury. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I seek leave to make some comments. Is leave granted? Leave is granted, Mr Rattenbury. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I acknowledge that this Assembly meets this morning on the lands of the Ngunnawal people, the traditional custodians, and I pay the Greens respect to Elders past and present. And I also underline our commitment to contribute to the journey of reconciliation and to closing the gap for First Nations people across all facets of life. Standing here today, I am joined by five new colleagues tripling the Greens' representation from the 9th Assembly. I am pleased to welcome the new members for the Greens. Rebecca Vassarotti, Emma Davidson, Joe Clay, Andrew Braddock and Jonathan Davis. With a representative from each electorate in the ACT, we will be able to represent more Canberrans and bring more of their voices to this chamber. My former colleague, Caroline Lakuta and I were pleased with what we were able to achieve last term. There will be six members in this place I know we can contribute even more this term. With our increased capacity, we will be able to take more community to talk to more community members, more organisations, more industry groups, and bring their issues, their concerns, their hopes and their ideas to this chamber. I would like to thank our campaign manager and campaign staff, our party director, 
all our staff who work to develop our comprehensive policy agenda, our entire team of candidates, and of course, the many, many hundreds of volunteers who put their spare time and their heart and soul into helping to bring about the result that is represented in our members in this chamber today. On behalf of all of the ACT Greens, I would also like to congratulate all of the members who were elected and particularly welcome the new members who are joining us today. I would also like to take this moment to acknowledge those members who weren't re-elected. Gordon Ramsay, Andrew Wall, Bette Cody, Deepak Raj Gupta, James Milligan and Candice Birch. It is a tough and very public way to lose your job. And I know each of them put so much effort into their role in this place and also their campaigns. I wish them well as they forge a new path post-politics. The Greens took a bold and progressive agenda to this election with a plan to build a better normal for Canberra. From the vast and destructive fires and suffocating smoke at the start of the year, to the social, emotional and economic impact of the pandemic, it is clear that business as usual will not help us meet the challenges we are facing. We need to take action to address the climate crisis. We must do more to ensure everyone has a roof over their head and we need to confront the growing inequality in our community. My colleagues and I put forward a detailed and cohesive platform designed to respond to these critical challenges. And we are so grateful that so many Canberrans related to those ideas and supported us to champion them in this place. We will do our very best to honour the trust that you have placed in us. Today, the ACT Greens have voted for Andrew Barr from ACT Labor to be the Chief Minister. Over the past two weeks, we have sat down with ACT Labor and discussed our shared values and priorities. And these are reflected in the parliamentary and governing agreement that we signed together yesterday. That agreement will enable us to continue a very productive working relationship in this assembly and in government. The Greens are very proud to have brought forward such an ambitious vision and the community will see plenty of this vision reflected in the agreement. As the agreement notes, it comes at a defining moment in our territory's history and outlines a strategy, a strategy to address the major social, economic and environmental challenges we as a community face. The agreement represents Labor and the Greens' shared commitment to serve the people of the ACT and to govern with, for and in the best interest of Canberrans. Our commitment is to work in genuine partnership while we retain our distinct political identities and operating cultures. We have demonstrated over previous terms that we can collaborate, compromise and innovate to get good outcomes. And that is what we plan to deliver for Canberrans during this term. Parties agree that the world is facing a climate emergency and the agreement commits us to undertake rapid science-based action to mitigate and adapt to climate change. We will take steps to phase out fossil fuel gas in the ACT by building all electric suburbs and infill developments creating the ACT's first gas-free, all-electric commercial centre in Molongolo and assisting households to make the transition from gas to electric. We will reform the ACT's building and planning systems to ensure a transition to best practice, climate-ready and environmentally sustainable buildings and planning. We will tackle the ACT's transport emissions by transitioning to zero emission vehicles and giving people improved options for transport with an expanded light rail network and better walking and cycling infrastructure. As a city, we must invest more to address homelessness and access to affordable housing options. Under the agreement, our goal is to deliver 1,000 new public and community housing dwellings by the middle of the decade and to expand the capacity of our community services to help those in need. We want Canberrans to have a stronger voice in the way their city is governed and what their neighbourhoods look and feel like. That desire is reflected in commitments to update and improve Canberra's planning system and foster neighbourhood democracy. We want to build a community, we want to build community connection and have members of our community work together and with government to solve the questions we face and be clear in prioritising where we put our effort. There is of course much more in the agreement and in the election platforms that both the Greens and Labor took to the election. The agreement is a public document as it should be, 
available online for anybody with an interest to read. One question that has already been posed is whether we can get it all done. It is a broad ranging agenda, brimming with plans to make this city better and meet the needs and aspirations of our citizens. It is ambitious, but we make no apologies for that. It is what we stood for and it is what the city of this people deserve. For the Greens, we would rather set stretch goals that have, than have a shortage of ambition. This agreement does that, and we Greens look forward to working with our colleagues in the Labor Party to deliver our ambitious plans for the residents of this territory. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Rattenbury. Members, standing order four requires that the assembly proceed at this sitting after an election to elect a deputy speaker. Mrs. Jones. Martin and move that such member be elected to the position of deputy speaker. Does the member accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Is there any further proposals? So the time for proposal has expired. That being the case, I do declare that Mr Mark Parton is elected as the Deputy Speaker. <laughs> so members, we'll move on to papers at this point and pursuant to the Auditor General Act 1996, I present the following Auditor General's Report number seven of 2020 entitled Management of Care for People with Serious and Continuing Illness and number eight of 2020 entitled Annual Report 2019 to 20, including the Corrigendum. Pursuant to section 15 of the Annual Reports Government Agencies Act 2004, I present the following annual reports for 2019 to 2020, that being the ACT Ombudsman, the Inspector of the ACT Integrity Commission, and the Office of the Legislative Assembly. Pursuant to Section 20 of the Government Agencies Campaign Advertising Act 2009, I present the reports of the independent reviewer for the periods 1 January to 30th of June 2020, 1 July to 11 September 2020. For the information of members, I present the following committee reports of the 9th Assembly, those being the final report of the Select Committee on COVID-19 Pandemic Response, together with a copy of extracts of minutes and proceedings. Report 9 of the Standing Committee of Justice and Community Safety, entitled Report on the Evaluation of the Current ACT Policing Arrangements, together with a copy of extracts of minutes and proceedings. Numbered. Report number 10 of the Standing Committee on Justice and Community Safety, entitled Review of the ACT Emergency Services Response to the 2019-20 to bushfire season, together with minutes and proceedings. And report number 51 of the Standing Committee on Justice and Community Safety, the legislative scrutiny role, together with copies of extracts of the relevant minutes and proceedings. And these reports were circulated to members of the 9th Assembly when the Assembly was not sitting. And pursuant to Standing Order 191, present a list of amendments made to the following bills, the Electoral Amendment Act 2018, Public Instance the Closure Amendment Bill 2020, and the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill 2020. With that, I will call Mr Barr. Madam Speaker, uh, pursuant to section 56 of the Public Sector Management Standards of 2016, I present a very long list of engagements of long-term senior executive members for the period 1 March 2020 and 31 August 2020. And I also present, pursuant to the Legislation Act of 2001, subordinate legislation in accordance with the list circulated. Thank you, Mr Barr, and again. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move that the Assembly, at its rising today, adjourn until 10am on Wednesday the 2nd of December 2020 and fix Thursday the 3rd of December 2020 as a sitting day of the Assembly. The question is that that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Chief Minister again. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that so much of standing orders be suspended as would enable the order of business for Wednesday and Thursday, the 2nd and 3rd of December 2020, to be as follows. Prayer or reflection, presentation of petitions, ministerial statements, presentation of executive business bills, assembly business, Notices and orders of the day, 
questions without notice, presentation of papers, ministerial statements, private members' business, as ordered by the Standing Committee on Administration and Procedure, and notices and orders of the day. The question is that that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. And Chief Minister again. Uh, I move that the Assembly do now adjourn. question is the Assembly do now adjourn. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The Assembly stands adjourned until Wednesday the 2nd of December at 10am.